Good afternoon, everyone. So I'm Maya Kerkur. I'm a nature lover, an environmental and circular economy specialist, and an eco-entrepreneur. But I'm not here today to talk about my personal journey, rather about how innovation and technology can act as catalysts for green entrepreneurship. Indeed, today, to solve our pressing environmental challenges from climate change to biodiversity and habitat loss, to water shortages, to pollution, we need to reimagine how our world can function completely differently. From smart eco-design solutions, to regenerative practices, to circular business models. And it is not just about um, resorting to renewable energy or recycling. Of course, they are both very important and part of the equation. However, there are many other solutions that we can adopt in our green transition, and we're going to hear about some of them today. So to, give, uh, to put things into context, uh, I don't know if you knew that uh, today the global green technology and sustainability market has been evaluated at $16.5 billion last year, with an estimated aggregated growth rate of almost 20% up to 2032. So there is a lot of potential for green enterprises to actually establish and flourish, whether in our region or internationally. Uh, just, uh, I would like to highlight that sustainable innovation is not just about inventing new inventions or uh, relying on high, uh, the highest technologies. It could be about uh, new uh, innovative ways of delivering our products and services, circular business models. Um, it could be about uh, solutions that are low-tech, but are uh, redesigning the way we, pro we consume and produce uh, in a uh, more meaningful way with less environmental impact and less social impact. So I will be giving you examples of such solutions, a glimpse of them with the short time that we have, starting with uh, no-tech green innovations. In our region and worldwide, more and more green startups are uh, rediscovering innovation, green innovation, uh, with very low-tech. Good examples are uh, startups that are um, going back to vintage, second-hand goods and products and clothes and working on making them the new tendance, uh, creating the right climate, the right perceptions, changing mentalities towards second-hand, refurbished, high-quality goods. We also have enterprises going back to more natural materials, some of them being grown in regenerative practices such as linen, wool, uh, bamboo, hemp, and also using natural dyes. Some enterprises are recreating the right enabling environments to recirculate packaging containers and products. Uh, such as, for example, uh, figuring out ways to take back bottles, cleaning them to the highest standards and refilling them again, putting them back into the market. Other uh, entrepreneurs are uh, going back to the refill system, providing affordable basic produce or other products uh, at, at low cost because they're getting rid of the package, which can cost between 30 to 40 percent of the product that you are buying, and providing affordability. People come in with their own containers and refill them. We also are seeing a lot of startups upcycling, in particular non-recyclable non plastic waste, from nylon to plastic bags to inflatables to broken umbrellas, or e and even uh, upcycling uh, kite surfing and sailing equipment into really fashionable accessories, bags, pillows, and other products. But one excellent example of low-tech uh, and highly innovative uh, invention is 3D ocean farming, whereby seaweed and shellfish are being farmed in our oceans and seas uh, at a very low impact. So that means that seaweed and shellfish, such as mussels, uh, oysters, and clams, are farmed in the open sea or oceans. And the advantage of this is that the growing seaweed actually has an enormous capacity to capture CO2 emissions, but also to create uh, algae farms that attract fish and other animal life uh, in the sea. And this requires almost zero input, no fertilizers, no uh, synthetic chemicals, and so on and providing highly nutrition, nutritious food and jobs. 
This is currently being scaled up in the Northern Sea and many seas around the world. Moving to low-tech green innovation, this could be, for instance, by using regenerative materials or identifying and turning waste into valuable new materials. An example here is uh, oyster shell waste that is uh, coming from restaurants and fisheries and being transformed into construction materials from bricks to tiles to even uh, lime-based natural reflective paint. A great example comes from Egypt, Shitozan. Any of you heard about Shitozan? Yes? So Shitozan is an Egyptian uh, enterprise that is transforming shrimp shells waste into an organic biofertilizer and biopesticide with the potential soon to, for biomedical and cosmetic usage while empowering uh, local uh, women, rural areas, uh, uh, and creating new jobs. Um, we are also innovating from all kinds of ways. An excellent example here is uh, fallen leaves from trees, you know, the autumn leaves that are being collected and transformed into paper products, such as these paper bags or cardboards, uh, cardboards without the need for felling any tree or cutting any tree. We also have sustainable chemists, which are using natural ingredients, but also uh, biodegradable ingredients to produce green cleaning products and non-harmful eco-friendly cosmetics that are also biodegradable and do not pollute our water, our soil, and our health. Reverse engineering is being used to bring back some materials to their, or products to their original material, such as these discarded tires that become afterwards, again, synthetic rubber that can be put back on the market and manufactured again uh, for other uh, rubber products on the market. We are also seeing enterprises substituting plastic and foam packaging by reusing agricultural waste, such as wheat straw, for example, banana waste, into packaging mycelium as a regenerative material, also into compostable, biodegradable packaging. And here we have sound insulation that is being uh, produced from mycelium, uh, which is the mushroom roots, uh, in order to produce non-synthetic um, sound insulation. Some bigger companies are also relying on natural materials uh, to redesign their products, such as these shoes, but also working ethically in a fair trade manner with the producers or the suppliers. And other bigger companies are completely reviewing how they are designing their products, such as these shoes being redesigned so that they can be disassembled and every single material can be, at, at the end of the life of the shoe, either reused or at least sent to recycling. Moving to tech-enabled green enterprises, as you know today with uh, our new technologies such as QR coding, such as AI, such as online databases, uh, GPS tracking, we are able uh, to create many new business models relying on this, these affordable uh, technologies. And we are seeing a lot of them in our region and internationally uh, creating new circular business models. Uh, good examples are these uh, applications that allow for buying and selling your second-hand clothes or products. Others are allowing uh, to put in consignment, uh, luxury goods, uh, second-hand vintage, so that people sell them instead of throwing them and they have a new value on the market. We also have a lot of applications that are allowing the households and the offices to sort properly, so they teach them how to sort properly, what is recyclable, what is not, and they use a gamification process whereby they get rewards or discounts the more they send uh, products that are properly sorted to recycling. They are also using AI-enabled smart bins to recognize the different types of recyclable and making the recycling process more efficient and less costly. We also have subscription models, such as these e-bikes, electric bikes, which are not sold. People have to rent them on a monthly basis, and the advantage of this is that the suppliers have ownership for these bikes, meaning that they have an incentive to keep them as durable as possible, to maintain them, to keep them uh, being used continuously at their highest quality. 
And on top of that, uh, they are coupled with an application that tells the user how much CO2 emissions they have been avoiding by using the e-bike instead of a conventional car. So again, providing these incentives and behavioral changes. We are also seeing uh, some uh, new models to get rid of uh, disposable containers. So thanks to uh, QR codes and other types of tracking, containers that are reusable are cleaned, working with a pool of uh, restaurants and cafes, and being put back on the market for food deliveries and uh, uh, restaurant deliveries. 3D fabrication, digital fabrication, is also allowing to produce with the least waste possible exactly to the, stand, the size and the, and the needs of the products, but also using sustainable materials and recyclable materials, such as plastic coming from these water gallons that are being transformed into high-end design products or other types of products, while also fashion designers are uh, 3D printing uh, clothes to... Oops, sorry. Clothes uh, customized to the fit and taste of their customers, meaning that their clients will have a higher incentive to wear them and to keep them longer with the least waste possible. Moving to high-tech, green-tech innovations, there are many now happening, so just a few ideas here or a few examples. Recycling recovered plastic waste coming from the sea, such as plastic bottles from the sea, into um, a very highly durable and uh, uh, waterproof uh, coats or products and accessories. We also are seeing the invention of bioplastic, in this example made from fish waste and algae, to replace cling film and aluminium foil. Here we have the example of uh, shellfish and crab waste being transformed into a leather-like fabric, while mycelium uh, coming from the reishi mushroom is transformed into vegan leather and textiles through biotechnology advancement, very high-end products, while others are 3D printing uh, compostable mushroom roots into, and other biomaterials into also high-end or other types of products. We also have young innovators that are uh, uh, redefining the vision of our boats, the boats of the future, by integrating um, wind uh, and solar power, as well as hydrogen storage into these boats. And even more ambitious project is these floating hydrogen ports, whereby wind power and solar and hydrogen storage would allow the creation of uh, aquaculture hubs for fishermen to, uh, to produce uh, to fish in a sustainable manner and uh, less impact. And finally, the last example is in our uh, need today to feed the world with uh, proteins, a growing population with protein. Some startups and, uh, and companies are experimenting with cellular agriculture using a precision fermentation process that is allowing uh, to grow um, a flower uh, from microbes into in labs and to have high quality proteins. Other startups or enterprises are now putting on the market cultivated meat uh, by taking a sample of the animal cell, the highest quality uh, uh, cell, animal cell, and lab growing it in a bioreactor to have meat, basically. So I hope that I give, have given you uh, an idea of the spectrum of possibilities from low-tech to high-tech innovation into sustainability, into sustainable solutions. Uh, I recently heard someone saying waste is a lack of imagination. And the more I think about it, the more I think this could be true if we are to completely redesign our world, the way we are creating our products, to think that every single, ty single type of waste can actually be revalorized into a precious new material, become something new, and to use natural materials, biodegradable, regenerative practices, we could ultimately uh, do, uh, get to this green transition that we, uh, at least here, are all dreaming about. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>